today's subject is injury prevention injuries in yoga class there was one article published in some famous newspaper and they presented a statistic and the statistic was quite shocking statistic statistics said that 65 to 70% people who go to yoga class get injuries yoga is the science technique to stop injuries to heal injuries but interestingly the way yoga is practiced today it is causing more injuries than healing very senior teachers were interviewed and most of the senior teachers complained that they have one or more part of their body which is injured for many years 10 years 15 years 12 years 5 years now if that is the case then we need to look at this injury aspect more seriously as yoga teachers it is our responsibility to make sure no one gets injured in the class in fact they get benefits to their previous injuries by practicing the yoga that we teach so let's start what is injury injury is a physical damage to a part of your body so there is some kind of change in your physiology because of certain impact because of certain movement because of certain accident whatever many things can cause injuries that also we'll see injury is also a stress beyond your capacity the strain beyond the capacity when you stretch your joints beyond capacity there is possibility that the ligaments in the joint may get injury if you stress your muscle beyond your beyond the capacity of that muscle then the stress can damage maybe break some muscle fibers accidents and trauma where certain part of your body is hit or getting some damage like having some damage to it injury is also called when the joints muscles or tendons or ligaments are damaged sometimes the injury is also caused to the nerve nerve endings in our body there are a lot of nerves the nerve endings can get hurt sometimes you know sometimes when you hit your elbows you just get this very strong tingling sensation that is that impact on the nerve sometime that can be quite strong so that can bring some numbness to you sometimes uh, when people sit on the desk and they start writing sometimes they get this numbness you heard about it no in the wrist and all that that is connected with nerves generally the nerve in the injuries are classified into three overuse and misuse sprain and strain the overuse and misuse it generally when you use the muscle too much maybe too often continuously say when you uh, play particular sport or say you are doing the computer work so you using this these muscles continuously so it's a overuse what is that syndrome called Ah, it's a repetitive stress injury it's this is a very common name but that probably is called that carpal tunnel syndrome or something right you heard of it but what you used word repetitive stress injury is what is misuse and overuse continuous repetitive stress you are giving to that muscle then the second type of injury is sprain generally this injury is to the joint you are all clear with muscle ligament and tendon let me tell you muscle 
we all know what is muscle muscle is the one that allows us to move our body move the joint move different parts of the body do some phys- uh, work lifting the weight pushing it running here there doing some asana muscles are very important so injury to the muscle is called overuse or misuse means repetitive stress injury comes to the muscle category then the second category is sprain the sprain is a injury to the ligament now ligament is what joins bones and bones when two bones in the joint are joined together what joins them together is called ligament and then if you injure that ligament the type of injury is called sprain and strain is an injury to the muscle or tendon in which there is a tear direct tear now what is this tendon tendon is nothing but a part that joins muscle to the bone is the is that join where muscle ends and on one side is muscle and on the other side is bone the so joining muscle and bone is tendon in strain either there is a tear of muscle or tear of tendon this also sometimes you call as pulled muscle it's actually a injury to the muscle fiber or tendons what are the high risk areas where you can get injuries especially in yoga class joints high risk area joints especially knees many people are really fond of doing lotus pose padmasan and they keep pulling the knee joint in a very weird direction the knee joint is designed to move in this direction only in this direction that's how the knee joint is in padmasan you make it in awkward position and then you are trying to lift it this is not a movement of your knee joint the knee joint is only this this movement but when i am putting so much of arm strength knee joint is very, really weak in this direction so you can easily cause knee injuries sometimes in standing asanas people bend the knee much more than their foot and then that makes the knee joint quite weak so there's many asanas that can put excess stress on the knees ankles also ankle joints there's a lot of asanas which create strong pressure on the ankle standing position warrior pose or some uh, sitting postures lotus pose also creates a lot of stress on ankle joint then neck asanas like shoulder stand head stand they put lot of stress on the neck joint you understand the physiology the neck joint is designed to carry the weight of your head that's the design so if i put the whole body weight on the neck joint it's anyway quite weak position for the neck joint and i do fancy things there and i push that joint beyond the limits in those asanas then that neck joint is at very high risk of getting injury elbows also in cobra position or in arm balances elbow joint is stressed so if you are not able to manage that position well then it can easily result in injuries also many times we don't pay attention to the weak muscles that we have in our body not every muscle is strong some people say oh i have lower back muscles slightly weaker some say that oh my uh, core muscles are weaker some say my arms biceps and triceps are not very strong now if you don't have awareness of what is strong and what is weak and with your weak muscles if you push yourself it's easily going to cause strain or if you do it continuously then it may cause it may cause repetitive stress injury to those those parts then ligaments in the joints are also 
easily damaged nerves can also be damaged and then the last is bones risk of fracture you doing some fancy pose and you fell down <laughs> then the bone may be fractured so these are the areas which actually these are can cause injuries in yoga class let's study this little bit more in deep in depth trauma or accident i have seen people falling in uh, peacock pose crow pose head stand people fall down because they don't have a good neuromuscular coordination and they keep pushing themselves so they they meet with an accident and injure themselves another reason why people get injured in yoga classes is they force themselves into the pose you know you look at someone who is really flexible and then she in forward bend she can touch her forehead on the knee and shin so easily so you feel really jealous of her and you feel awful about yourself so you push 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 then a sound comes <laughs> and then someone carries you in the room <laughs> because someone told them no pain no gain this is a ridiculous argument no pain no gain what is this argument to do with yoga yoga is all about steady and comfortable pose but people don't focus on that they just keep pushing themselves if they don't push then there are some teachers who push sometimes you see the student are pushing themselves and then the teacher comes and he pushes them even more there's this latest fashion if you go to a really posh kind of yoga class then the teacher comes and stands on your back when you are doing forward bend so you pay more money and then the teacher will stand on you very easily <laughs> this is such a opposite idea of yoga pushing yourself and teacher pushing you this is not acceptable to yoga and this is one of the major reasons what causes injuries also students don't develop awareness of their body because when they are doing asanas they are paying attention to something else they are looking in the mirror wow oh how i look oh in a way the mirror can help see if your back is straight or if your legs are this way that way your knee is like this that's one benefit of mirror but people don't use it for that people are just obsessed like look at me <laughs> so then the body awareness goes down and because there is less body awareness i push myself beyond my limits very easily and that is a problem if someone is obsessed about his body no problem but at least have body awareness then you will not cause injuries we don't keep awareness of our weak links say when we are in flow i'll tell you what happened two months back we were teaching some difficult strength exercises yogic exercises but really strong and i have hurt my shoulder while playing badminton i'm still having it still the pain is there but you know the momentum in the class you know people say oh nice can you show this now i know that it's hurting me but i still did it and then after the two days it was really hurting and i knew it's going to hurt Now, this is not nice probably if the opportunity comes <laughs> again <laughs> i am not sure if i'll do it or not but that time i did it but this is what happens many times you say we'll see later 
right now just do it yes there's that adrenaline rush or maybe what you can call as that momentum of the class that can also result in injuries and last but very important not paying attention to the alignment principles asanas need to be done with care you can't just bend as you like you can't just twist as you want you can't just do as someone else is doing you have to pay attention to the alignment principles of asanas what is what are alignment principles i'm going to discuss it in details but just to brief you just to tell you very quickly i'm dividing alignment into four parts alignment first part you have to focus on the purpose of the asana what is the purpose of the asana if the purpose of the asana is back bend then your body should do back bend and that is the main purpose so you should stick to that second purpose is understand the limitations of muscles and joints wrist joint it moves wrist can move in this direction elbow elbow can't move like wrist elbow only can move in this direction this is a limitation shoulder shoulder is much more much wider much stronger movement of shoulders neck every joint has limitations and its strengths you have to consider the strengths and weaknesses together while thinking of alignment in that asana muscles tendons ligaments their limitations and the third thing not four sorry it's not four things it's the three things the third thing in alignment is balance and stability you have to make sure that your posture is balanced maybe left and right side balanced or maybe upper body lower body is balanced this balance is very important when you think of center of gravity so center of gravity need to be stabilized in that asana this is alignment i have told you three things first is the purpose of asan second is strengths and weaknesses of joints and tendons and ligaments and muscles and third is balance and stability if you pay attention to these three principles you will not cause any injury we will discuss this alignment principles about every asana slowly slowly in the asana class also some of it you are discussing but we will have a special session on alignment hmm? then coming to the injury prevention how does yog look at injury prevention what is the perspective of yog what the approach we should take so that we can prevent the injuries the first you have to understand the definition of yog asana yoga pose asana is sthira sukham asanam steady and comfortable comfort word brings that gentle approach the steady and comfort word talks about a positive harmonious approach to your body so it has to be a gentle and caring approach to your body you can't just say that my body i can use any way i like no you have to have respect for your body you have to have care for your body and that's why you have to be gentle the body is giving us service we want to go here from there there we want to eat these 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 and body is helping us do everything that we want so we should treat the body with bit more respect bit more care bit more gentle approach we must understand the limits of our body we can stretch our limits slowly slowly i am not telling you to limit your body i am telling you to understand the limits of your body so that you can slowly stretch them you can't stretch the limits of the body suddenly in one month just because you have paid a lot of money for teacher training that does not give you authority or right to stretch your body beyond the limits as you wish no you have to understand your body and as per what your body allows someone if they are little older then their body may not become flexible 
faster like the younger people younger people their body will become flexible stronger faster and that this is a understanding that you have to have sometimes people are slightly overweight and then they look at flexible people and they expect their body to behave like the skinny flexible people that's not going to be possible immediately you have to have understanding acceptance of weaknesses acceptance of these conditions the body is undergoing changes and we have to respect that the body has particular structures and we have to respect that if you understand accept that then it will help you prevent the injury another important aspect of injury prevention is pay attention while you are doing the practice pay attention to little signs that your body gives say you are forward bending and you feel little tenderness in your lower back little fatigue to the muscle or maybe just you don't feel that you are very strong in that you have to be very gentle in that case if you don't pay attention to this subtle signs that your body gives and you just keep pushing it will result in injuries another very good way to prevent injuries is good warm up warm up is necessary to loosen up the joints align the ligaments in the joints the blood start circulating more whatever toxins are accumulated in muscles or joints they are washed out so you can use that muscle to the full capacity you can use the joint to the maximum extent and that can allow you to minimize the injury so warm up everywhere all over the world in sports also warm up is very necessary i don't have to stress the importance of warm up to you but warm up is all about slow controlled movements in the joints slow controlled stretching of the muscles this is warm up warm up is not fast movement uh, warm up is slow controlled movements slow stretching within your limits this warm ups can also be used in a little different way please pay attention say you are doing shoulder stand now shoulder stand is not considered a beginner's asana because shoulder stand exerts lot more stress on your neck so shoulder stand is considered little intermediate asana now when i am doing shoulder stand can i just suddenly do shoulder stand that might hurt my neck so what i can do is first i can probably do the warm up with the neck and maybe wrists maybe shoulders but after that i can do a little warm up pose say for example i am doing viparit karani the inverted pose where you did you learn the inverted pose viparit karani where you raise the legs then lift your back but you are not taking the back to the 90 degree but you are making a 45 degree angle so here is your head this is your back and this is your legs so it's slightly easier on the neck so this asana works as a warm up asana for shoulder stand this is shoulder stand this is head here back straight leg straight this is putting so much stress on the neck and shoulders this one is much less so i do inverted pose as a warm up pose there are intermediate many intermediate asanas where you can use some easier pose say for example you want to do straight arm cobra pose a straight arm cobra pose is strong on your lower back so what you can start with easy cobra just telling you another approach of how you can use warm up positions for intermediate asanas now don't say that for for easy cobra i need some warm up <laughs> important <clears throat> like warm up pose 
another very important thing you can do in asanas is slow and controlled movements while you get in the asana and you come out of the asana and those movements are coordinated with breath slow so see i am i am bending forward so if i am bending forward i am starting very slow stretch and then slowly i start bending forward now this slow controlled movements with inhalation and exhalation make me aware of my body more so i am not going to over stretch beyond my limits because i am aware of my body why i am aware of my body because i am doing slow and controlled movements integrated with breath <clears throat> this is very helpful technique to prevent injuries in asanas another technique that you can use for injury prevention is provide support to your students who are new who don't know sometimes student get injuries while they are doing it maybe first time second time but they don't know how to provide proper support to themselves so you as a teacher you should some provide some support and sometimes props are used <clears throat> some blocks are used some straps are used some ropes are used we don't use it here but if you if you want to use it it can help for the newcomers for the beginners to minimize injuries ancient time no one used this props ayyangar bk ayyangar the great yoga master uh, he invented uh, this props but he himself when he learned he never used props so he was asked a question why did you design the props what he said was very interesting he said that he met with an accident and then many of the asanas that he was able to do before he could not do and that is why he had to use this props so if someone is not in a position to do asana then use of props is acceptable but generally yoga should be done without anything but for injury prevention you can use this approach i don't think there's anything wrong in using the props if it is for injury prevention <clears throat> then another important aspect which we discussed in the asana lecture how much to push how much to stretch your muscle how much to stretch your joint the weakest joint that you have while doing a particular asana you should not stretch that joint beyond 70% of the maximum capacity of that joint say i i told you the other day if i am bending i am bending and if this is my 100% means i am uncomfortable here so i should go back to 70% so this is my comfortable 70% 80% fair enough even 85% enough but beyond that i should not go so i can stick to 70% this approach will actually make you more flexible and also prevent injuries we discussed how it works if you just want to remember this again so let me again tell you if you stretch any muscle to 100% of its limit like to the maximum limit the brain sends signals to the muscle that you are stretched at the maximum limit so you may get hurt or you may have tears so the brain send signals and the muscle starts contracting so if you go to 100% the muscle starts contracting if you reach 70% only the brain sends muscle uh, say, signals to the muscle saying that yes you are comfortable so the muscle starts relaxing more the more it relaxes the more flexible it becomes if it starts contracting then over a period of time it's going to get shortened and if it relaxes over a period of time it's going to get longer see the logic works this way i am doing 70% today tomorrow i am again going to do 70% after 10 days i am again going to do 70% but my 70% today is not the same 70% on the 10th day because on the 10th day my muscle has become slightly longer you understand me this approach is very safe approach and this is exactly how you can become more flexible much more flexible than you can imagine 
alignment principles we have already discussed this point probably just got repeated you can also use simple modifications or variations for difficult asanas say for example you are doing spinal twist and for spinal twist you have to grab the toes and twist but grabbing the toe is difficult so do a easy variation if this is also difficult then do the easy variations so you are you are fulfilling the purpose of the asana but you are preventing injury because you are doing a easy variation so you are getting the benefit of the asana but not pushing beyond your limits so variations is a very good way as a yoga teacher you should all remember different different variations of the yoga poses that are taught to you that yoga point asana book that you have it lists more than 200 asanas and movements and all of it has so many variations and you should start remembering those the asanas that you learn in your daily class you should also look at the variations and remember it even if you are good at some asana still try and do the easy variations and see how it feels it's a important study for you as far as asanas are concerned then counter position is also very helpful when you do a strong forward bend the counter position is easy back bend if i do straight arm cobra then the counter pose is a forward bend but you can't do a very strong forward bend paschimottanasan no because then strong back bend and to counter that if you do strong forward bend then to counter strong forward bend you will have to do strong back bend again so you keep doing it <laughs> so you have to tone down if you do a strong forward bend then do easy back bend if you do a strong back bend do a easy forward bend say like child's pose say if you do side bend what is the counter to the side bend if you bend to the left the counter is bend to the right but you do it with equal intensity say you st- strongly bend to the left and also you need to strongly bend to the right then the counter becomes gentle half left side bend if you start from right side then end on right side if you start from right left side end on left side same is true with twist if you bend on left side then bend on right side and then to get rid of that strong right side twist gentle bend on the left side you understand this approach these are counter positions when you do shoulder stand is a strong stretch strong forward bend in the neck what asana you do for releasing that strong matsyasan fish pose fish pose is also strong so what do you do you only hold it for little while say you hold for you hold shoulder stand for 3 minutes then you hold fish pose only for 1 minute so intensity is less and timing also is less this is important in counter position what is counter position less in intensity and less in time am i clear so this is about how you can prevent injuries in a yoga class just a little discussion as to what other things you can use for healing of your injuries the technique quite popular technique that's called a rise rest ice compression and elevation so that there is not a lot of inflammation but now there are some other studies and researches which suggest that the inflammation should be there because the inflammation has the chemical composition to heal it faster so i am not getting in it if it helps you do it scientifically i am not going to debate or discuss anything about it but what certainly helps is relaxation for sure focused on breathing and that part which is injured if you relax that part focus on your breath and concentrate on that part it helps 
gentle slow movements you know physiotherapy is all based on this if you want to heal some injuries then do gentle movements supported gentle movements with not excess stress but there is a movement there then gentle massage also helps we all know that if the back hurts what do we say okay give me a massage can you please 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 very helpful i was discussing with my friend who has a studio and he was telling me there's there's other studios which there's so pe- so many people attend but they all have injuries so i said uh, why don't you just instead of yoga studio you can say yoga massage a uh, healing studio and then uh, you will have all of them <laughs> but anyway massage is something that we all know which helps as far as medication is concerned the modern medication anti inflammatory muscle relaxants they don't really heal anything technically it doesn't heal anything it just suppresses the symptoms of the pain they are not playing any big role in your healing it just to make sure that you are comfortable they your body takes time to heal if you damage something in a fr- in a second it takes maybe months to heal completely so you have to also understand that injuries are not something that can be healed in couple of hours so uh, i'm going to stop here with uh, this injury prevention are you